met to um when i lived in san francisco th- these guys i met these young guys on uh they went to stanford Grindr? they were yeah <laughs> no <laughs> they uh they <laughs> They uh the these the, that did come out well. They they weren't that young. Uh these guys that went to <laughs> these guys that went to Stanford, they basically I found this thing on Eventbrite where they were doing like it was very clear what was happening, which was it was two guys testing a startup idea and they either got someone to donate them a really big room uh or they like rented it for a very little amount of money but i think someone just donated them th- this room and one of them was like an enthusiast enthusiastic person or uh, enthusiast of breath work and he they basically we all went there and they put this eventbrite link up we each paid $30 and 30 of us went there so uh what's 30 times 30 and is that 900 okay uh well we, yeah we don't do public math and so yeah, <laughs> I take that back. Bleep that out. I don't do public math. <laughs> uh, so I went to his. I went to this guy, and he the the lights were down, and they start playing this music. And like, I went with my coworker. He was like, "Hey, I found this thing on Eventbrite. Let's go check it out." And we went to this, his place, and thirty of us did breath like a breath work session. It was. It was. Have you ever been to a Soul Cycle studio? I was gonna say, yeah. It sounds it's like a, Soul Cycle. Exactly. Hot it felt yoga, like the, yeah. It felt exactly like that. And it was the best business ever. And they were clearly... I talked to him afterwards. He's like, yeah, we're just testing this out and we might turn it into a business. And they didn't do it. And they totally should have because it was way better than SoulCycle. Why? They had nothing. It was just a yes, room a with room. lights, yeah. sound, <laughs> and you're sitting there and they just hit play and the guy guides you a little bit. He kind of talks to you and it was awesome. But it I works. Was like, like I will- the effect at the end, you, you, you walk out with a high. So you've given people an experience. So... We talked about this a while ago with the Simone Biles thing. I, we, we made a prediction that next five years, mental fitness, not mental health, mental fitness, which is training your body and your brain to sort of like be able to master your mind a little bit better um, and not just avoid disease and illness, but actually be fit mentally. Um, this totally is going to become agree. more in vogue. I think that this breath work, I think breath work is going to be the new meditation. Um, I think that the same way that, you know, Soul Cycle and Barry's Boot Camp and Hot Yoga have become these alternative. You know, we had the gym, which is this kind of cold, sterile, isolated, solo, one player experience. And then you had Soul Cycle come in. It's like, no, this is multiplayer yeah. with a leader you just submit to. They just tell you, they just shout and tell you what to do. And they're like, they look heroic on the stage with their body and their, their voice and their microphone. And then we're going to program you with this music that you can't help but feel like you just went to the club. We're going to heat you up so you sweat because that feels good. You're going to feel like you got a workout in. And we're going to guide you through a process. And whether that process is cycling or it's boxing at Rumble or it's Barry's Boot Camp and you're running on a treadmill or it's uh, hot yoga and you're you know trying to touch your toes, this is a model that works. It is an experience that you give somebody. It is a feeling. It is a one-hour guaranteed high that you get to, you get to get without the use of drugs. And so, um, so I'm pretty convinced that there's going to be a breathwork style version of Barry's Boot Camp or, or Hot Yoga that becomes just as popular as some of those other ones, perhaps even more popular. And I think that the app that he's, get, he's building is going to be like a calm, calm style app if they execute well, because I think there's a big market for this. You know, these are sort of like ancient I techniques completely agree. that can be modernized. Another thing that stood out for, during your story was uh, I've actually read about this. Uh, I've, I, there's this like recurring theme of people I look up to. So Chris Saka, or is it Saka? Chris Saka. There's this uh, Israeli guy named uh, uh, Vivi. Have you heard of Vivi? Vivi. No. V. So his uh, his full name is uh, Aviv Nevo. So A V I V space N E V O. So this guy, he's an Israeli guy. He's probably in his 60s now. 60s now. He kind of looks like Sting. Uh, he's like this, like good-looking, like suave-looking dude who's like in shape. He's probably in his sixties. Uh, he came from Israel. His parents were wealthy. They died when he was young. Gave him ten million dollars uh, in an inheritance. He used that ten million dollars to invest in some stuff. Ends up becoming the largest shareholder of Time Warner. And now is this like big shot guy who hangs out with like Bono and like he's like a Jay Z. Right. Like they all looked like he's got like they good think he's energy. Sting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like this like <laughs> spiritual guy. You could Google him. There's a lot of like really interesting articles about him. He's kind of like the Great Gatsby. So anyway, there's him. There's Chris Saka. Another person who this story applies to is this guy named Cowboy Cerrone. Cowboy Cerrone, Donald Cerrone. He's a famous UFC fighter. They all have locations outside of major cities. So Cowboy right. Cerrone has a place in Denver. 
this VV ranch. guy has a yeah. yeah he's got and this VV guy has a place right outside of LA and then Chris Saka had a place in Tahoe three hours outside of San Francisco and their competitive advantage in getting into interesting deals is they have like interesting places that aren't necessarily expensive VV's got his, his right. place is expensive expensive Donald Cerrone's at first probably wasn't that expensive Chris Saka is not that expensive and he gets these like founders to come out to his place he's like hey look I have this cabin out in the woods you want to come chill and hang out and right. he like shows them around and gives them this amazing experience and that's how they like end up investing in different stuff i actually think that strategy is amazing to have a place just to live you can live a little bit on the outskirts and like everyone comes to you they're on your terms because that's the best way to like get shit done is everyone on at your house on your terms where you're the boss they get to know you i think that's a competitive advantage i've thought about doing that in either texas or new york where i'm staying now is getting a place that's like two hours outside of the main area. Dude, and let's making- ta- let's time share it. My my first million ranch. Uh, I'll go in. I'll invest in it with you. We'll get five other cool people that we like, and then whoever wants to retreat to the ranch at any given time can. It, it would totally work. Like I, I think it's a really like a huge competitive advantage, don't you? I, well, I think it's cool. I think it's definitely cool. I don't know if it's a competitive. It's a competitive advantage in that. Um, you can go deep. So there's this idea of like, do you go wide or do you go deep? I would say most people go wide. I go deep in terms of, in terms of your strategy with people. So what, what is wide? Wide means you have a lot of light connections, loose ties, um, you know, a lot of acquaintances, a lot of, a lot of friends, but not a lot of friends that you could call when you need something or not a lot of friends who are going to think of you first when they see something awesome. And going deep is the exact opposite. It's having a group of, you know, 10 or less people. That you're like, okay, I would go to, I don't go to war for you and you would go to war for me. And I think that both of us have more of this deep strategy than wide, where it's like, we have a handful of people that we just trust implicitly. I could give them my bank account and sleep well at night. And, um, and because of that, we can share information. We can say, dude, so like, how, how do you do this? How much do you make doing this? How do I set this up? Like, what, is this good for me? Bad for me? You know, what do you think? Or a deal happens. And uh, like this morning, I, I'm in a deal that's going really well. A startup deal is going really well. And a buddy texted me. was just like, hey, look, like, can, get me into that. And I was like, okay, I will, I will put as much credibility as I can into this to get you into that deal. And, uh, and vice versa. If they, if, if they had something, then, then, then the same. And so I think that the ranch style escape is a great tool for going deep. So Chris Aka talks about he would uh, – he had the, the founder of Instagram early on. Uh, he was like, I think working out of dog patch labs as his like co-working space. And he invited him up to his Tahoe cabin to come like work out of there. And I think he like stayed there for like a few weeks, if I remember the story correctly, like living in the guest house or whatever. And then Travis Kalanick, when he was starting Uber, the story is, yeah, he came to Tahoe. We spent four nights or three days, three days together. He was, we were in the hot tub, just jamming on what, what could happen. It's like immersion by the end of three days with somebody like, you really trust that person. You like that person. It's so different than a meeting, than a Zoom call and trying to have eight back-to-back Zoom calls. Like we had, what's her name? Uh, Br- Brie Kimmel on the show and she showed yeah. us her calendar and it was like 30 minute Zoom, then 30 minute Zoom, then 40 minute email follow up, then 20 minute Zoom. Then, and it's like, okay, that's one strategy. I want to basically say clear the calendar. You know, let's go road tripping together. Let's go, you know, let's spend a day. Let's go to this MMA fight together. Let's have unique experiences that are longer, more in depth, and that build more trust. And I'll, I'd rather do that with a few people than try to do it, try to know everybody. Same. We're the exact same. I find it to be exhausting. Um, 